Okay, we're going to go ahead and correct our homework. So you should be opened up to page 117 in your workbook. Awesome. Okay, so we started with number five. So for number five, they gave you 60, and then they wanted you to multiply by a power of 10, a, a, a couple different powers of 10. So if we look at number five, we have 60 times 10 to the zero power. That's the same as 60, because if we remember 10 to the zero power, that's the same as zero tens. There's nothing there. So our answer would just be 60. 60 times 10 to the first power, this is the same as just 10. So 60 times 10 is 600. 60 times 10 to the second power, this is the same as 10 times 10, which is 100. 60 times 100 is 6,000. 60 times 10 to the third power, that is the same as 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000. 60 times 1,000 is 60,000. And then 10 to the fourth power is the same as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is the same as 10,000. So 60 times 10,000 is 600,000. Go ahead and show me on your thumbs how you did with number five. Show me on your thumbs. How'd you do with number five? Okay. Awesome. Go ahead, put your hands down. The next number we had was 17. So for 17, it asks us to solve 100 times 17. So in your head, if you think about it, 17 times 100, that's the same as 1,700, which when we say 1,700, that's the same as 1,700. Now, you also could have stacked 117 and multiplied, and you would have gotten the correct answer as well, 1,700. And then 18, I know it's a little blurry on my smart board, but that's 102 times 10 to the fourth power. So that's the same as 102 times 10,000. And so if you multiply those, you should get 1,020,000 or 1,020,000. How did we do on 17 and 18? Show me on your thumbs. How did we do on 17 and 18? All right, we're going to go on to the next one. So next, we have 21, number 21. So, all right, here's number 21. All right, ready to rock? So for number 21, it said, a hotel, a hotel chain is ordering new furnishings. What is the total cost of 1,000 sheet sets, 1,000 pillows, and 100 desk chairs? Well, EOC, is, you should be at your desk. Well, we would need to find out how much 1,000 sheet sets cost, how much 1,000 pillows cost, and how much 100 desk chairs cost, and then add them together. So what you should have done is taken 1,000 times 24, which would get us 24,000. Then you should have taken 1,000 times 7, which would get us 7,000. And then taken 100 times 114, which would have given us 11,400. And then when you add up those three numbers, you should have gotten a grand total of $42,400. Now, is there anyone who forgot a dollar sign? What do we call that in math? Emmy? Well, it's a dollar sign, but it's a word problem, so you always need a what with a word problem. Oh, I put a unit. It starts with a U. Emmy? A unit. You always need a unit. Do you guys remember that? A little bit? So, for a word problem, there's always something. Shares, balloons, whatever. So, your answer for a word problem should always have a unit. In this case, we're talking about dollars, so it has a dollar sign. Then we have 24 and 25. So... Here's 24 and 25. For 24, choose all equations that are true. The second and the fourth one are true. Because this first one, 14 times 1,000, that would be 14,000. So there should be another zero here. The third one, 30 times 100, that would be 3,000. So again, there should be a third zero. 
And then this last one, 50 times 100 should only be 5,000, not 50,000. Then for 25, you're doing the same thing, but instead they were using 10 with exponents. So the first, second, and fifth equations are true. Here, 164 times 10 should have gotten you, what, what should that have gotten us, guys, for this one? 1,640. They added too many zeros. And then for this fourth one, 55 times 10 to the second, that should only be 5,500, not 55,000. So again, they added too many zeros for that one. Are there any questions about our homework? Any questions? Zoe? Can I turn it in? No, you do not turn it in. You keep it in your workbook. Okay, you guys. Here's what I need from you. You are going to, when I say go, you will, and I hope you're listening carefully because I'm not going to repeat myself. You are going to take out your math notebook, open up to the next clean page, and get ready for today's title at the top. Go ahead. Yay. here in a second if you're like well three digit and two digit what are you talking about missy so our title for today 3.3 .3, multiplying three digit by two digit numbers so when i use a hashtag like that when we're taking math notes i'm talking about numbers because before hashtags before twitter that was a symbol to represent number so 3.3, .3, multiplying three digit by two digit numbers and today's date, 9-15-2020. And put a thumbs up on your desk when you've got that down. And I wanna say you guys did an awesome job during our math recording yesterday and you're doing an awesome job today. So thank you so much, fifth grade. So thumbs up on your desk when you've got your title and date down. And again, if you want to put your name on your notes, you can just keep it up in that title area, either above the title or above the date. Why do you guys think it's important to put the dates on our notes? Why do you think it's important? Abby, why do you think? So that when we do our homework, we can find the date that it is today. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because, yes, today is only the second day of math, so it won't be too hard if you could flip through your notebook and find your notes. But imagine in like the middle of October, after we've been taking math notes, and you need to find today's math notes, you're going to look for the date. So you want to make sure you are putting the date on your notes. It's very helpful. And next year in middle school, when you're taking notes for all of your subjects, you're really going to want to make sure you're putting the date and you're putting that title just as your teachers want you to. All right. So you guys, today we have one vocabulary word. Yay. So we're going to go down. And again, you know I like to loop my Gs, so I'm going to skip that first line. And we're going to write vocabulary, and we're going to underline it. I would say either underline it or put a star next to it or something that kind of just shows you it's, a, a, it's like a subheading. 
it's not the title, but it's important. It's kind of, when I underline things, it's like the next section of our notes. There you go. That sounds great. Okay, so our one word today, partial products. Partial products. So partial products are the multiplication results we get before the final product or answer. And notice, I underlined the word before. That's important. So I want you to underline the word before as well. Partial products are the multiplication results we get before the final product or answer. Remember, a product is the answer to a multiplication problem. So they are the results we get before the final product or answer. And some of you may be thinking, Missy, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I bet you know what partial products are. You just may never have known what they were called before now. And we'll have an example that points out exactly what partial products are. Partial products are the multiplication results we get before the final product or answer. So, our example. We have, in a multi we have a multiplication problem here as an example. So I took 24 times 11, I stacked it. And I, I went through and I solved 24 times 11. Those partial products, you guys, that's when we stack two numbers to multiply. And you know how then we get these two numbers here and we have to add them before we get the final answer? Those are our partial products. They're part of the answer. They're part of the product. They're not the final product, but they're part of the product. So that's why they're called partial products. So when you multiply this way, stacking your numbers, it's called the partial product method. You're multiplying by first getting the partial products, then adding them together to get your final product, your final answer. So the partial products are 24 and 240. The final product is 264. Put a thumbs up on your desk when you've got your example done. Make sure you're labeling what the partial products are, just like I did.
how many of you, when you have like a multiplication problem you can't do in your head, how many of you stack it like this? How many of you do that? Okay. How many of you knew before today that this is called the partial product method? Some people? Okay. How many of you knew what partial products were um, when I first revealed the vocabulary? Okay, some of you remember that? Okay, awesome. Now, what I want you to do is think in your head. Our title, we're talking about partial products, right? Right now? But our title says multiplying three digit by two digit numbers. Think about what do you think that means? Multiplying a three digit number by a two digit number. I want you to turn and talk with the person next to you. What do you think that means? <laughs> All right, finish up. You're talking in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Who can raise their hand and tell me what do you think it means multiplying three digit by two digit numbers? What do we think that means? Allison. Two hundred thirty-four times eleven. How many digits are in the number two hundred thirty-four? Show me in your hand. Thirty. How many digits? Only like five people know. And two hundred thirty-four. How many digits are there? Three. Two, three, four. Two hundred thirty-four. And then times eleven. How many digits are in the number eleven? Show me in your hand. Two. We have a one and a one. So today we're just practicing. Multiplying three-digit numbers by two-digit numbers. Yeah. Why do you guys think that we're starting off with multiplication? Raise your hand. Why do you think we're starting off our year with multiplication? What do you think? Drew, what do you think? To get our heads back into it. To get our heads back into it. That's definitely part of it because you guys, I know you've been virtual learning, but being in person is very different. So getting your heads back into it. What else do you think? Mackenzie. We ended with multiplication. Yes, Mrs. Wells told me that you guys had ended with multiplication last year, so I thought it might be a good skill for us to start with this year. I, Emmy? Because we're in fifth grade. Because we're in fifth grade, and this is something we do in fifth grade, that's also part of it, too. All right, so. Oh, are you guys talking about where you left off? Yeah, and fractions and division. Fractions and division? Okay. Yeah. In fourth grade, you guys do a little bit of fractions, a little bit of decimals, a little bit of division. Fifth grade, we just kind of expand those skills. We get a little more in depth. We take it a little, uh, one more step further. Awesome. Okay, so you guys, waiting for voices? Awesome. Waiting for voices? Okay, so what we're going to do next, multiplying three digit by two digit numbers. We're going to practice. As you guys know, I want you to be able to practice these types of problems before you get to your homework. Because it would make no sense for you to take a little bit of notes, not practice at all, and then me say, okay, guys, give your homework. That's not fair to you. So go ahead, write down multiplying three digit by two digit numbers. I like to underline it because it's kind of like our next section of notes. Our first section was our vocabulary. Now our second section is multiplying three digit by two digit numbers. What? I said multiply. Oh. <laughs> multiply. I'm sure multi multiply is a thing. Do you have like a pie with like multiple flavors in it? Multiply. Multiply pies. Multiply pies. Multiply Why are you doing this? Yeah, it can't be like, um, it's kind of like a mixed berry pie. Do we do a hashtag? Do you want to? Yeah, so you guys, Zoe just had a great question. You know how up in the title, I used the hashtag as a representation for number? Mm -hmm. Zoe just asked, can I see? Instead of writing 
don't have to wear numbers. Could I write the hashtag in an S? Yes, you can. You might have larger handwriting than me. It might be harder for you to put that on a line. So if you want to um, kind of condense the word number into a hashtag, you definitely can do that. Ready to rock? Okay, before we get started on these problems, I'd like everyone to stand up and take a quick stretch break. I'm already doing a stretch. Awesome. Take a stretch break because I can't always be doing a stretch break. It's Today we're going to get the problems written down first before we solve them. Oh wait, I forgot. We're first going to do one together and label the parts and then we're going to have some practice ones. I'm sorry. So this looks like a lot. It's not. This is just an example for you to label, for you to look back on. So you'll see on this problem we have, yes, this is the only one you have to label to, just this one. We have 168 times 34. 168 times 34. Now, if you're having a hard time reading with the green font is, I kind of put a bracket under 168, and I, I labeled it three digits. Because 168 has a one, a six, and an eight. So that is a three-digit number. Can you put three G-I-G? So I labeled 168 as our three-digit number. Then times 34, and I did the same thing to 34. I put a bracket underneath it, and I labeled it two-digit because it has a three and a four, two digits in the number. Hmm? That's a multiplication symbol. Here? Yes. So then, you guys, what I did is I, I drew an arrow because a lot of your problems are going to be given to you like this, 168 times 34. But in order for us to solve it, we need to stack them. So I drew an arrow. When you stack your numbers, you guys, you want to put the number with the most digits on top. And I'll explain why in a second. So I put the 168 on top and then times 34 on the bottom. So I labeled my three digit number, I used a hashtag, three digit number is on top, the two digit number is on bottom. So I put 168 on the top, 34 on the bottom. Now I have this note here, you guys, with a little star. It says, make sure they line up. Why is it important for your numbers to line up? Well, you can see it better. Why else? EOC is. You might not line it up in the three Yeah, you guys, if R3 was lining up with the one, then technically you're saying it's in what place? The hundreds. 30, though, is technically in the tens. You want to make sure that three is in the tens place, that four is in the ones place. And do you have to write this stuff next to it? I'd like you to add. Yes. Yep. Just for this one. The other ones you won't have to. Yeah, so we always want to make sure we're lining up those place values. The 8 in 168 is in the 1's place, so it should line up with the 4 in 34 because that's also in the 1's place. And then there's nothing here because 34 doesn't have a digit in the 100's place. Why do you guys think I want you to put the number with the most digits on top when you are multiplying? Why would we do that? Turn and talk with the people around you. Why would we do that? Why do you think? Because it's 
has a bigger number on top, if your smaller number is bigger, because if one of your smaller numbers on the bottom is bigger than one of the top, you can add that together and then put one of them next to it. That way you have more numbers on top to add. Okay, I see what you mean. Yep. So this way you're doing, you're, you don't have to do as much work, right? Yeah. Yep, you're totally right. Got it. So you're doing like more add more. Yep. Okay, I think I heard most people giving the same answer. The reason why we want to put the number with the most digits on top when we're multiplying is because, remember those partial products we were talking about? Remember that? If we have the larger number on top, then we're going to have less partial products we have to add together at the end. Because right now, we would multiply by the 4 first, right? And then we multiply by the 3. So how many partial products would we have to add at the end of this, do you think? Two. Yep, because there's two digits in 34, so we'd have two partial products down here. Now, if 168 was on the bottom, how many partial products would we have to add up at the end? We'd have to add three, because there's three digits in 168. So by putting the smaller number on the bottom, there's less work you have to do when you're having to add those partial products. Do we have to make sure it lines up? Yes. Yep. That's the only one you have to do it for. Okay. Now we're going to get some practice problems written down, fifth grade. So, underneath, and remember, this example is here to help you. So make sure you're using your notes if you get stuck on homework. We're going to label it practice. I left a lot of room. I did not need to leave this much room. You would leave as much room as you want. But we're going to label the last section of our notes for today, practice. We're going to underline it. Awesome. Okay. So we are going to write down the problems first, then we will solve them. Capiche? Okay. So we only have four today. Okay. I don't know how well these are showing up, but these are my, I numbered my problems. So one, two, three, and four. So the first two, I already stacked them because sometimes you guys in like your workbook, they'll already stack it for you. Then I have two that aren't stacked because sometimes you'll receive multiplication problems that aren't already stacked for you. So the first one is 51 times 10. And notice the numbers are lined up. Number two is 892 times 18. Make sure you're lining up the correct place values with each other when you write it. Then number three is not stacked for us yet. 106 times 7. I want you to write it down like I have it, and then when you go to solve it, then you can stack it. And then number four, we have 439 times 22. And well, that was a good question. The reason why I want you to write it down like this is because I want to sh I want you to be able to show me that you can stack them and line up the numbers on your own without needing it done for you, okay? So just me seeing where you're at with that. So again, number one is 51 times 10. Number two is 892 times 18. Number three, 106 times seven. Number four is 439 times 22. Once you have these written down, just like I have them, you're going to go ahead and solve all four on your own, then put a thumbs up. When the person next to you, when your partner has their thumbs up, then you're going to compare answers. Capiche? Quietly, go ahead and solve these problems.
I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. I know some of you are still working. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. Let me come and get these together. Thank you. 
but we're going to look at these together, see how we did. So, for number one, we start at our zero, right? Yeah. So, what's zero times one? one, one. Zero. zero. Oh, my goodness. All right. Zero times five? Zero. What do I need to add here? Placeholder zero, because this isn't a one. This is technically a ten. So, that by putting that zero there, it's like we're multiplying by ten. What's 1 times 1? One? 1. And 1 times 5? Five? 5. 5. What are these two numbers called? Oh, partial, partial, product. partial products. They're part of our product, but not the final one. So when we add 0 and 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And we bring down our 5. Final answer, 510. Yes, Mackenzie. This was the only we did yesterday. We can bring this one turn and bring mm -hmm. it to You're totally right. You could have done that. Yep. All right, number two. I know this one tricked some people up because there's some harder multiplication problems in here as you're multiplying. So, first, what's 8 times 2? 16. 16. What's 8 times 9? 72. 72 plus the 1. 73. 73. So then I'm going to place my 7 over the next digit, bring down the 3. What's 8 times 8? 64 plus 7, 71. And then I'm going to put my placeholder 0 here again. And I always like to cross out the numbers that I added on top because I don't need them anymore. Then we have 1 times 2. What is that? 2. 1 times 9? Nine? 9. 1 times 8? Eight. 8. 8. What are these called? Partial products. Partial products. Nice. Then we add. 6 plus 0 is 6. 3 plus 2 is? 9 plus 1 is? 10. I'm going to bring over the 1, bring down the 0. 8 plus 7 plus 1? It's 16, because 8 plus 7 is 15, plus the 1 is 16. I'm going to add in my comma after the first three digits from the right. So 16,056. I'm going to circle this because it is my final answer, my final product. 
Now for number three, you needed to stack this one yourself. So which number should I be putting on top, you guys? 106. The number with the most digits goes on top. So I would have 106 times, and where do I need to make sure that 7 lines up? Right underneath the 6. Or, yep, right underneath the 6. All right, what is 7 times 6? 42. What is it? 42. Yeah, 42. Carry the 4, bring down the 2. What's 7 times 0? 0. Plus 4? Four, 4. 4. And then 7 times 1? 7. seven. And you should have gotten 742. All right, last one. We had to stack this one again. Which one should go on top? 439. 439 because it has more digits. So 439 times, and I'm going to make sure the twos line up in the place that they're supposed to. So your two should be lined up with the three and the nine. What is two times nine? Eighteen. Eighteen. Carry my one, bring down the eight. What's two times three? Six plus one? Seven. Seven. What's two times four? Eight. Eight. I'm going to add my placeholder zero. What's two times nine? Eighteen. Eighteen. 2 times 3 Six. plus 1, uh, seven. 7, and 2 times 4, eight. 8. What are these called? Partial products. Partial products. Nice. We're going to add. So 8 plus 0 is 8. What's 8 plus 7? 15. 15. I'm going to carry my 1. You know the 5. 8 plus 7 we know is 15, plus 1 is 15. 16. Carry the 1, bring down the 6. And what's 8 plus 1? 9. Nine. Put in my comma. 9,658. All right, fifth grade, I want you to show me on your hands your level of understanding. 1 through 5 with multiplying 2 and 3 digit numbers. Okay. Was there anyone who did notice they were making some silly mistakes along the way? Yeah. yeah. So the, the tricky part when it comes to multiplying is if you make one little mistake, then that alters your final product, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we are taking our time and being careful. Capiche? For homework tonight, you are going to open up in your workbook to page 129. I'm going to tell you which numbers to circle. So was it work time? Wait, so this yes. Is yes, this will be your homework. You will get work time. 129. Ready to rock? Okay, so the numbers you are circling on page 129, waiting for voices to be off this grade. Wait, is it only page 139? It'll be a few on 132. All right. Number two. Circle number two. Wait, what number? Two. Number two. Is this the first number? Yep. Number four. Okay. Number seven. Okay. Number eight. Then number 13, which is on the next page, and number 15. Just six problems. Number two, number four, number seven, number eight, number 13, number 15.